Young pitchers on a roll and rookie hitters finishing strong. Up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Wednesday, September 27th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And let's talk about these young pitchers performing very well to finish the season. Ryan Pepio did it again, this time in Coors Field. Six innings, one run, nine strikeouts with a career-high 19 swinging strikes. Reese Olsen, another strong outing up against the Royals. Five and two-thirds innings, two runs allowed. Seven strikeouts with 22 swinging strikes on 92 pitches. And the last name here, Michael King was at the Blue Jays. He threw six shutout innings, one hit, five walks, five strikeouts. It's got three great names, league winners mm -hmm. here down the stretch. What are you thinking for next season? How are you ranking those three as sleepers? Well, I like all three a lot as sleepers, Frank. Uh, I'm going to put Reese Olsen as the third of the group because I'm, I'm least confident in his upside, and obviously it is in a bad situation for wins with the Tigers. But there still is a lot of upside. We've, we've talked about the slider, the 40% whiff rate on that. Uh, here in September, he started to mix in the changeup more, and I think it's helped to round out his arsenal, make him less predictable, make him more effective. Uh, it hasn't helped to strike out totals, Reese Olsen's, but... In this most recent start against the Royals, he did have 20 swing, 22 swinging strikes, seven on, of them on the changeup. As he throws it more, maybe it'll become more of a swing and miss offering on its own. But Olsen is third on the list. It's really between Ryan Pepio and Michael King as the top two. Uh, I, lo I love both of their upside. It does seem like Pepio's sacrificed a little bit strikeout-wise to get this impeccable control he suddenly developed. Uh, and so that is part of the reason why I'm going to give King this light edge. The other being that I think the Yankees are less likely to fiddle with King's workload next year. You know, even now the Dodgers are having Pepio do things like follow openers and they're just kind of a less predictable organization with how they manage their pitchers. So I'm going to go King one, Pepio two, results in three. All right, let's talk about some rookie hitters who are finishing strong here. We'll start with corner infielders. Jordan Walker went two for four on Tuesday in the month of September, batting 313 with four homers, one steal, and an 898 OPS. And Christian Encarnacion Strand, one for five with his 12th home run. Last 20 games, batting 366 with eight home runs, 18 RBI, and a 17% barrel rate. Any thoughts on Walker and CES? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, they're finishing strong. They have a lot of upside, which you pretty much already said. Encarnacion Strand, I think I think I'm going to be more invested in him between the two. I, I don't I don't know that it'll go earlier than Walker. Walker has the bigger pedigree. But Encarnacion Strand, of course, turned himself into a pretty good prospect before being promoted. Um, I still think I still think there's a fair amount of skeptics. Even though you look at Encarnacion Strand's minor league track record, the power production second to none, really, uh, and and he was a good source of batting average down there as well. I think that gets overlooked just how well he hit all around, and we saw in spring training how hot he can get. He can carry a team for weeks at a time, and and he seems to be doing that with the Reds here down the stretch. So, and then you factor in Joey Votto's probably out of the picture next year. Easy spot for Encarnacion to step into first base, take over there. Uh, I think he's a good bet for 30 home runs next year. Like him a lot. Yeah, I just realized I kind of cheated on this one too because Jordan Walker has third base eligibility for this year, but he won't have it for next year. So he's mm -hmm. only going to be an outfielder. Um, but at least, I guess, for the sake of this conversation... I included him as a corner infielder. Speaking of the outfield position, three rookies also finishing hot. Parker Meadows went two for four with his third home run, his 150-game pace, 14 homers, and 32 steals. Willier Abreu with the Red Sox went two for four with a double, two RBI on Tuesday. 23 games played, 371 batting average, an, uh, a 1,000 OPS on the nose. And Matt Wallner went one for three with a grand slam. And he's got serious pop, a 17% barrel rate, 
That is tied for ninth best among hitters with at least 200 plate appearances. Any excitement about Meadows, Abreu, and Matt Walner? Yes, I think especially for Abreu and Walner. Walner, I do think there's a limit to his ceiling. He does strike out so much that I'm impressed, frankly. He's been able to hit 249. I don't know that we can ask much more of that from him. But the power's legit. He hits the ball very hard and hits it a long way when he does make contact. Uh, I think there's also a question of how much the Twins will play him against left-handers next year. They've, they've played him a fair amount this year. Numbers suggest they shouldn't play him that much, so maybe they'll make some changes in the... They'll add some pieces in the offseason that make Walner more of a true platoon player, which would, of course, limit his fantasy appeal. I'm most excited about Willier Abreu because I, I think... I don't see a lot of flaws in his game offensively. Um, walks a lot. Uh, hits the ball hard enough to get it over the fence. We saw plenty of that in the minors as well. But there, like with Walner, there's a question of how much the Red Sox play him next year. Uh, uh, Adam Adam Duvall and Justin Turner, they're both free agents, so maybe they walk, but you're going to have Jaron Duran back. And say Don Rafaela has, of course, made a case to be a regular part of the lineup next year. So it could still be pretty crowded, particularly if they bring back either of Duvall or Turner. Definitely going to be something to monitor this offseason for Willier Abreu. If you have not seen this Matt Walner home run from Tuesday, please go watch it because I have never seen a ball land in that location of Target Field. It says 463 feet. I, I don't think so. I think that was like a 500-foot home run. That was crazy. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye.